Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Q&A for our four week body challenge and our body challenge is starting next Monday on the 2nd of May and today is Thursday the 28th of April. Firstly ladies I just want to say thank you so much for your questions. The fact that you're asking questions means that you are already plugged in to creating a change in your health and your fitness. It shows you care. It shows that you do want to, you know, get transformation. So I do want to say congratulations and thank you for taking that step and actually asking questions. You'll notice here on our um, presentation that I've put that you know, the limitations that you can put on yourself can really stop you from achieving your goals. So today I may share some answers to your questions that don't suit you. You may think, oh, I didn't want to hear that. But really it's the limitations that you're putting upon yourself that is stopping you from getting to where you want to be. So as you go through this today, I just want you to remember if you're able to just accept the knowledge, surrender to the knowledge, then it will make it a lot easier for you to be able to establish some really healthy, long-term, sustainable goals and habits and be able to get some fantastic results over the next four weeks. Okay, well, let's get started. So today's questions that we have been asked, and there's a few more on top of this, is bananas, yes or no? Can I have the smoothies, bananas? So we'll have a little chat about that. Um, keeping regular, number twos. And, um, you know, it's always a question I get asked in every single program. So please don't feel alone in that. And women often say, ah, I'm bound up, Dana, help. And so we'll have a little chat about that today. Also, artificial sweeteners. Yes, no, do they work, don't they work? Um, what about bread, coffee, Pepsi? And we're also going to be talking about yogurt. So there's lots of good information happening today. So I hope that you stay with me. Grab a pen and paper if you wish to make notes. Um, but this will be available to you on our private page and um, for you to come back and, and go through again if you choose to. Okay, so I just want to say welcome. And as I said, Thanks for your questions. Remember the question, um, what have I got? Remember the question is not can you, it is will you. So that sort of goes in with the idea of um, if you don't like what I say, you're going to have to come to a little bit of a talking to yourself um, as to whether you're going to choose to um, go ahead with what I talk about or whether you choose not to. And ultimately the decision is always yours. So girls, before we start, let me just ask you a couple of questions. What did you have for breakfast today? What choices do you make unconsciously that sabotages your health and fitness? And what is your morning routine? I ask these questions because I believe if you start yourself off on the right foot or the right note, you end up the day seems to go in a better direction, doesn't it? So for me personally, I ensure when I get up of a morning that I've got these little rituals in place that I know support me for the rest of my day. And those rituals do include the way I eat, the way I move, the way I think. I've got little rituals in each of those areas. So by the time I get to 8 a.m. in the morning, I've ticked all those boxes to set my day up correctly. And so I'm hoping through this journey of the next four weeks that through our education, I will be able to support you enough that the way that you are thinking, the way that you are acting, the way that your emotions are even um, either you're reacting to them or not reacting to them will support you to be able to really get some long-term um, results in this program. Okay, so the first question, girls, let's get straight to it, is why? you know, this eating plan that you've been given, so it's called Get Your Body Back Eating Plan, 
Um, it shows that there's no bananas. Why is a question. And another question was, well, can we have um, like the smoothies that were in the detox for the liver detox? So what can and can't we do around bananas? So before I answer that question, I do want to take a step back. And I want to take a step back that says the four-week body mind challenge is about showing you how to bring your hormones into balance, how to speed up your metabolism, and also how to reduce inflammation in your body. Yeah. And so the eating plan, the way that we move, the workout plan and your education is going to be wrapped up in that idea. So by the end of this four weeks, I've been able to give you a short education and a short practice and it will support you if you are a woman over 50 that maybe your hormones are out of whack or maybe you're, um, you've got high inflammation in your body due to pre-existing chronic disease. So I want you to think of things like diabetes, cholesterol, um, heart disease, uh, joint pain, all those different things, autoimmune disease. And it will also support you if you haven't been an avid exerciser who has looked after your lean muscle mass and you want to take the step back in but you're unsure of what's safe, what's effective, how to do it um, and all those good things. So that was the idea of the four-week body mind challenge. What I'm showing you here on this picture is about hormones. So we are going to start to talk a lot about our blood sugar levels. And what we're going to know about our blood sugar levels is if they are spiking during your day, they lead you to being at risk of things like type 2 diabetes and also um, other symptoms which you may not be aware of. Now, what I'm going to do is rather than go through this actual graph, I just want you to see that there's lots of spikes there. And that is actually um, a real human's um, blood sugar spike levels. And it was actually a research study done and it was showing glucose spike levels, so blood sugar spikes, um, those that did not exercise compared to those that did exercise. So if you are able to catch my masterclass, which is free for everybody, you will see how this actually does work. So I do recommend you go back and watch that if you haven't had a chance to do so. But girls, why is this so important? Why is it important that we get hold of our blood sugar levels? This is why it's the big picture. As an aging woman over the age of 50, because we start to lose our lean muscle mass naturally and because our body has been, with our immune system, has been fighting the baddies for a long time. So as we've put toxins in our body, be it alcohol, be it sugar, be it um, white bread, cake, biscuits, um, toxins that we breathe in using all our different cleaning products maybe that are quite toxic, preservatives and additives in our packaged food. This is the big picture and our body as we're getting older it just doesn't clean up the mess the way it did when we were younger. Our bodies are aging. So if you are holding belly fat or if you are having any of these symptoms, such as mood swings, fatigue, you know you eat food at lunchtime and you feel like you need a nana nap in the afternoon. If you've gained weight in and around your belly, or maybe it's that back fat, you know, just underneath your bra strap, that back fat you'll often see. Or maybe you're 
heading in the direction of chronic disease. Now, chronic disease are put in as diabetes, heart disease, autoimmune disease, cholesterol, blood pressure, all those things. But also we've become very aware of blood sugar spikes and breast cancer. And I actually put a post out just last week into some findings of how to... Um, how to reduce your risk of getting breast cancer and I've shared some tips with you so go back and look at that post if you have not seen it but what I want you to know um, things like joint pain these are symptoms that you are maybe having blood sugar spikes throughout your day and you're not even aware of it and I'm going to go through um different foods that are going to show you why this is important on this next four week journey to help you get some really great results so there's unstable blood sugars up and down up and down versus more stable type blood sugar so if I can create stable blood sugar you are going to basically reduce the risk of all those different things so you'll find your mood swings um, rather than feeling up and down have you heard of that um, what is it hangry you know give the person some food so they don't feel so angry these are all blood sugar dips so you've probably felt that flying high from um, having food that makes your blood sugar rise and then you've probably felt the dip where you feel lethargic tired you just need to sort of have something um, to perk you up again well they are all um, uh, clues that maybe your blood sugar isn't as stable as it could be ladies i personally was dipping into low blood sugar um, after lunch not high blood sugar but actually the opposite and by doing a tweak to my lunch menu actually completely dissolved that problem for me so it's incredible how food is medicine and you're going to learn through this Q&A today how different foods will support you or sabotage you in your journey to being able to get some really good results now we know that with um, belly fat it's a big um, clue to blood sugar um, dysregulation and the reason I say that is because when the sugar is in the bloodstream and it goes and knocks on the muscle door to say let me in I'm here to give you energy and you've lost muscle tone because you're older and it says sorry we're full we don't need you the glucose goes and sits in your belly in your fat cells so it is an indication and belly fat girls is really bad for things like heart disease so you'll know men that hold belly fat they're at high risk of heart disease well more women die from heart disease than they do any other type of disease so we also are at risk of heart disease and holding belly fat increases your risk um, chronic disease you know I've written cancer I said to you I wrote a post about that last week uh, diabetes if you choose to do nothing and you continue to have your blood sugar spiking you will find that you will become a diabetic my husband's a diabetic and those of you that are diabetics will agree with me it is hideous it can affect your kidneys it can affect your nerves so um, even things like becoming incontinent because you've damaged the nerves because of the sugar sitting in the bloodstream um, it it creates like a really difficult journey to losing weight because when your blood sugars are high your body will not burn fat it's trying to get rid of the sugar and so it creates a high inflammation in the body and it is hideous just just know it puts you at risk of more disease lower immune system and nobody wants to be a diabetic and it can be reversed and um, a type 2 diabetic can be reversed through the way that you eat the way that you move so it is definitely worth taking that step
Remembering girls with everything I talk about today, at the end of the day, is your responsibility. So it may not be your fault because you haven't found the education to be able to help you to get into peak health and fitness. But once you know the education, you know, the choice becomes yours, doesn't it? So the choice becomes you either take action or you just choose to allow that information to sink in and do nothing. What I will say here is if you choose to just listen and not take action, not step out of your comfort zone, it's really just junk information because you're not doing anything with it. It's just taking up space inside of you, um, inside your brain as such. And so remember that it's just junk without you taking the step forward. So we are here for you in this private group. It is your responsibility to reach out in the group and sort of um, get the support, the motivation and the love that you are wanting from the other members and myself. And as a team together, we can help each other. We can hold each other's hand. And the days that you find hard, we can um, give you that little bit of motivation to push through just like a mum does with a little kid that's finding a day hard at school you know we hold their hand we give them a bit of a pep talk and they're able to turn up the next day and life looks far rosier the next day because you know what happened yesterday certainly doesn't happen after a good night's sleep so I do go through all of this information with you but do know it is your responsibility to take the action and to reach out and get the support that you need to make change possible long term. Um, uh, so all this sort of stuff goes once we stabilise blood sugars so it is important. So girls, the first question we came to was about bananas, yeah? So why no bananas? So the reality is I don't want to create a diet, but I do want to show you how to get maximum results in minimum time. Now, these images that I'm about to show you are not my images. These images have been created by a biochemist. Her name is Jessie. Now, it's called Inch Walk or something like that. I sort of um, don't know how to say her surname, but she's a biochemist and she's written a book and I will write the book in our notes in case you want to get hold of it. But it is a deep dive into your glucose spikes and how it does affect your health. And Jessie's clever. She's known as the glucose goddess. And what she does is she actually does all these tests and measure, just like a good scientist does, and shows you through images, basically eye-opening images to help you understand what food is doing to your body. So girls, in this image here, she's showing that if you had an apple, banana and strawberry smoothie, so how many of you think, oh, I'll go to Just Juice and get a juice because that's healthier than getting a Diet Coke or that's healthier than having, you know, X, Y, Z. So you think you're doing the right thing because isn't fruit good for us? Our age group always think that, don't we? So girls, that black mountain that you can see on that top photo that is blood sugar spike. It is huge. So when your blood is spiking in that way, you are not losing weight and you are putting yourself at risk of all those symptoms I said, your, your fatigue, your weight gain, um, chronic disease, all those different things because you've just done a spike by thinking that you're healthy. Now, the bottom one is protein powder, avocado, and a blueberry smoothie. Now, look at the difference in the spike. So what we know, girls, is when you eat carbohydrate, your blood sugar will rise, full stop. Now, carbohydrate comes in many forms, doesn't it? For some of you, you will have heard of what I call high GI and low GI. High GI, high glycemic index, low GI, low glycemic index. 
So basically what that's saying is high GI is this is how high your blood sugar levels are going to go fast and this is how low GI it's more a slow steady rise yeah. So when we have high GI foods because it's a fast quick hit to the body it's really damaging to the body. The sugar goes into the bloodstream we are now older the pancreas releases insulin, hormone insulin into our body and says, clean up that sugar, get rid of it. So it goes and knocks on your muscle door and your muscles say, look, we ain't got much muscle these days. We haven't exercised our whole life. We're full. We don't need you. So the blood sugar is sitting in your arteries, in your bloodstream, and it's rotting your arteries out. And your body just wants to keep you well. So it says, oh, we can't do this. Okay, dump it into those fat cells and so it needs to get your blood sugar down because it's so drastic to the body to have it so high but if you don't have your lean muscle mass and you've been aging you're going to find that you're going to hold it as belly fat this is toxic to the body it's toxic to your health and you just can't lose weight you just can't lose weight so by just changing that smoothie around where we've now changed our macronutrients. So macronutrients come in the form of protein, fat and carbohydrate. So we've put protein powder in this smoothie. We've put avocado, which is actually a fruit, girls. It's got a seed, but it's uh, basically high in good fat. Blueberries, which are known as a low blood sugar rise. And look at that rise in blood sugars compared to the top level. It is massive. So what does that mean for you? It means faster fat loss. It means better energy levels, less fatigue, less afternoon slump. It means a more flat line in your moods and less risk of long-term chronic disease. I'm just going to share one more picture with you. This one shows um, a ripe banana and an unripe banana. Now you can see with a ripe banana that it totally spikes your blood sugars very quickly. An unripe banana, not so much so. So in our program, because I am trying to really help your body become flat or stable in your blood sugars, I have not added banana into your blood sugar, um, into your program, because basically I'm trying to avoid the spikes, because this program is about teaching you how to really stabilize your blood sugars for some really great transformational results. But this is the learning lesson, girls, that I want you to know around the banana. Never eat your fruit alone. When you eat fruit by itself, it will spike your blood sugars far more. So what you do is Jessie, the glucose goddess, talks about dressing your fruit. So what she means by that is never eat it alone, put some clothes on it. And what she means by clothes is to put some protein or some fat there. And that will help your blood sugar levels not spike so much. The reason I chose berries as your on your eating plan is that berries are better for you for your blood sugar levels. They just do not spike them as much. So I've written here to dress your fruit with protein and good fat. So that's what I was just talking about. But you must remember, girls, that if you're going to dress your fruit because you go, I'm choosing, I've got the education that banana does spike my blood sugars, but... I do want to have banana. So you're going to say, well, okay, I'm going to add some protein powder in there and I'm going to add some good fat in there so that I'm not going to spike my blood sugars. But then I will say to you, if you are trying to lose weight, I want you to be very mindful of portion control. So I'm trying to help you in this eating plan by keeping it simple by keeping it um, achievable and showing you what works. In my experience, and it's been 30 years now, of working with people to help them lose weight and get fit, 
those that stay 100% compliant to an eating plan for 14 to 21 days suddenly start to learn so much about their habits, their body. Um, they just learn stuff. They go, oh, I didn't realize this about myself. And they're far more likely to stay compliant and succeed than those that start off on day one trying to change the plan. And girls, I'm even an example of this. I, I had an eating plan. I actually had parasites and they were creating some issues in my body. And the naturopath put me on a 16-week really full-on eating plan. We were going to starve out these um, parasites rather than we have to go on antibiotics. And it was stringent. Like we were cutting out things left, right and centre. And I in my little head was like, well, I don't want to do that. Like I love my protein powder of the morning and I love my green powder that I have and I love my maca powder for my hormones and I love. So I'm going through my little list and so I'm back to her within the day saying, hey, can I just add like use my whey protein powder and can I just use my green powder and my maca powder? No, I'm like, what the? And I was like, well, that just annoys me because I love that stuff. But then what I did was I'm like, surrender Dana to her knowledge, surrender to her experience, surrender to what she knows and test and measure. So girls, I did, I surrendered and it made for an easier journey and I started to learn a few things about myself. I started to learn how much I love control. <laughs> I can't do things my way. I started to learn more about my body, how it was reacting to different foods. And it was absolutely fascinating. So you're not alone if you are trying to manipulate the journey before it starts. But I want you to ask yourself the question, is it worth trying it her way to start with, test and measure, and if it really upsets my apple cart, I'm going to go back to my way. Is that fair enough? So that way you get to try a different way and if after, say, three weeks you go, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going stir crazy with this, I'm going to go back to my way. Fair enough, test and measure. So I just throw that out there because if you're trying to lose weight on this journey besides stabilizing your blood sugars and being healthy and fit and strong and a great metabolism, you do need to be mindful of portion control. So let's go on to our next question. And the next question is about bread, yes or no to bread. And the client that reached out to this said, I normally like sourdough, moldy grains. So Looking at those types of bread, she, what she is saying is I'm not eating white bread as such. I'm eating more the healthier type bread. So what does that do? So let's look at this again. And we look at white bread. You can see that the spike in white bread, 50 grams of white bread, is much higher than 50 grams of sourdough bread. But you can still see that sourdough bread does still spike the blood sugars. Now, the, what I want to show you here is what you put on your bread. So if you decided I was going to have red jam, which is like a high GI sugar type food, look what it does to your blood sugar levels. You will not lose weight when your blood sugars are spiking up and down all day. You'll get fatigued. You'll get mood swings. There's so much that goes into this. By just simply changing that topping to an unsweetened almond butter, which is a mix of good fat and protein, look what happens to the blood sugar. So I want to say here that the learning lesson about whether you can have bread or not is if you are going to choose bread, never eat it alone. So when you go to a restaurant and you eat that bread first, they bring out the bread, your blood sugars are going to spike way more than if you waited until after you ate your dinner, your protein and your fats and your vegetables in your dinner. 
Remember that you, I wrote dress your fruit, but I meant to write dress your bread with protein and good fat. I'll try and change that. So dress your protein, your bread with protein and good fat. So protein would mean you might have a slice of bread, which would be your carbohydrate, and you would have a good source of protein, which may be some chicken breast. You may have some good fat, which may be some avocado, and then you may have some salad with it um, as your green fibrous vegetables. What I want you to be mindful here is you don't butter it with butter and then throw avocado into the mix because that would be taking you out of portion control. And even though, girls, we haven't even started yet and your next question is going to be, well, what is portion control? Well, that's a good question for next week's Q&A because we are going to be doing lots of education through here. So you must remember portion control. My girls that have done Fit Fast Fabulous, you'll be all over it. You'll understand it. And it is necessary if you're wanting to lose weight. So my tips would be if you are going to choose to eat bread, to consider a low-carb bread as an alternative. I often recommend those mountain breads. They're quite low in um, calories and carbohydrate. But I also have become very aware, I think it's called Simpson's Kitchen or Simpson's, um, and they have like a low-carb bread available now. But be aware of how many calories are in there because it can topple you over depending on how much your metabolism is firing at the start of this journey because for most of you your metabolism is not going to be great so you start throwing too many calories into the body with a slow metabolism you're not going to lose weight so it is this fine line balance and once again I would suggest that you follow my lead and then after you have been following my lead test and measuring adding something in and go well that didn't work I put on weight this week take it back out again because what I normally think is a better option and I'll tell you why is to consider having things like salads instead of sandwiches because they are green fibrous vegetables so they're good for your gut health which I'll talk about a bit more and they are also much lower in calories and much higher in nutrients so for you to have a bright rainbow colorful salad full of as many green fibrous vegetables as you want, along with your protein and along with your good fat, now you're starting to cook with gas. Your body's getting all the nutrients it needs. The body's getting good um, gut health. Your body starts to fire on all six. But if you go, no, I definitely want my bread, well, you will test and measure by remembering to put protein and good fat with that by thinking about maybe a low um, GI. So the high quality breads are better than the low quality bread. So sometimes wholemeal bread, um, it's, it's a coloring. It's not even um, the quality of proper wholemeal. So just be mindful of the bread and be mindful of how much you are eating. Okay, next question was artificial sweeteners now girls this is fascinating so many people say to me well i just have honey because honey is so healthy and if we are talking about blood sugar spikes remembering the consequences of that especially in our age group this is one tablespoon of honey compared to two grams of stevia so you can see stevia does nothing to your blood sugar now that is tick 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 on so many levels because you are able to get the sweetness if you're a sugar girl but at the same time you um, are not sabotaging your results through blood sugar spikes one tablespoon of honey girls it has got nutrients and this is where we get confused in our age group it's like fruit you know it's healthy Dana it is but if you're having fruit as a fruit juice you've taken all the fiber out of it so it's going to just really be like you might as well eat a big bag of lollies you're getting the extra vitamins but that's about all you're getting as far as your health goes you're just doing such detrimental things to your health so we do eat fruit but I always recommend have it before lunchtime so that you will burn it in energy so it doesn't um, be detrimental to your health and we are now learning that we're going to dress it 
But if you like sweetness, um, Stevia Girls is the go. So the learning lesson here is some of you, um, sugar is sugar. So honey, um, fruit, maple syrup, white sugar, white flour, white bread, it will act like sugar in the body. Don't be confused because it's bread that it's going to be okay or it's honey, it's healthy or it's fruit, it's healthy. If you're over 50 and you're trying to lose weight, or you're trying to keep your health in a more happier way, be it your fatigue and your energy and the rotting out of your arteries and diabetes and cholesterol and cancer. Cancer feeds on sugar. You must start addressing your blood sugar levels. So girls, choose stevia as your form of sweetener. Some of you will say, well, what about equal? What about this? What about that? The thing I don't like about that is it's not good for your gut health. And so if you start having those cheaper forms, you could be playing havoc with your gut health. Now, the problem with playing havoc with your gut health is that your gut is so closely linked to the, the lining of your gut is very closely linked to your immune system. So 70% of your immune system is just sits outside your gut and so when you start eating foods that are creating gas and bloatedness and inflammation in your gut then you are putting yourself at risk of lowering your immune system now that's another talk for another day but what I want you to know is spend that little bit more money get stevia it comes in drops it comes in powder you can even cook with it and you are Ticking the boxes. Stevia is a natural um, sweetener. It is from a plant and it won't create the issues in your gut that those other sweeteners can potentially do. So the other thing I just want to say is, you know, I always say girls 80-20 rule and I always say like have a day off and don't stress about that day off. What I will say is if you are just in the back of your mind going, I really enjoy looking after my health, is just eat dessert type foods after meals. So if you're going to eat chocolate, for instance, don't eat chocolate in the afternoon with nothing with it because it's just going to send your blood sugars through the roof. If you were going to have biscuits, don't just eat them. You're better off having them after like you've had your protein and salad for lunch or after you've had your protein and vegetables for dinner. If you eat dessert type foods after you've eaten protein and fat, it will reduce the spike in your blood sugar. So it's a, just a tip to remember when you have your smoothies, always add your protein powder. Always think about good fats. If you're going to have a fruit smoothie, girls, you're putting yourself at super high risk of getting all those blood sugar symptoms. So that's just some tips there. The next question I got asked, girls, was about coffee and Pepsi. So I do want to just um, go through the Pepsi thing first. So um, coffee or Pepsi? Alrighty. So this is the first one I want you to see from Jessie again. This is like a regular Coke, which I'm sure probably none of you are um, drinking in our age group. But this is a sugar-free Red Bull. And, like, you know, put that with Pepsi Max. It's the same idea. It's got caffeine. It's got um, sweeteners in there. It's got zero calories, blah, blah, blah. Um, so you can see basically from a blood sugar level, it does not do much. So if I was saying from purely blood sugar level, um, yeah, go your hardest. Pepsi Max isn't going to affect you. The research is out onto if it affects our gut health and because of the preservatives and the additives and the type of sweetness they throw in there, it is suggesting that it could be creating um, our gut to not be as healthy and it can perma per permeate, is that the word? It can like break through the gut lining barrier and that creates like a little bit of a hole in the um, in the fly screen I say you know it lets flies in if you've got a bit of a hole in the fly screen well it's a bit the same with your gut like if you start to um, permeate through the gut and then your immune system has to work 20 times harder to get rid of bacteria and 
foreign things that have come into your bloodstream, you're now putting your overall health at risk. And so you just will not be as healthy and once again leads you down the path of disease. So if you are a Pepsi Max drinker, there's two ways of looking at this. You may say it is going to be a goal that I'm going to work toward and I'm going to limit my intake of it and I'm going to choose to have it um, for special occasions or um, you might say, oh, well, it's not going to affect me losing weight, so I'll just keep it in there. It's a, it's a hard call because um, it can affect your liver health dramatically and your liver chooses whether you lose fat or store fat. I just feel like those diet drinks for our overall health aren't great for us, but I also understand that they are very desirable if you love sugar and you're trying your best to get off sugar. Girls, it took me two years to get off sugar. I know how difficult it is. So I'm not going to say you can't have it. I'm just going to say be mindful that long term it may be better to, to think about maybe challenging yourself, getting out of your comfort zone and eventually getting it out of your life. Now, in regard to coffee, I just want to talk about coffee. Some people seem to react to coffee different to other people. So some people react to coffee and they will hold fluid in their body. They will get the massive um, adrenaline spike and then the drop and the low. Others, it just doesn't seem to affect them at all. And this is a story I often have of a lady from where I used to live in Mugulga and I used to get them to test and measure. So I used to say, take coffee out of your diet for two weeks. And they would test and measure their weight and measurement. This woman, oh, it was either one week or two weeks. I forget what it was. She lost 24 centimetres in her overall centimetre loss. So I used to get them to do their arms, their legs, their waist, their chest and their hips. She lost 24 centimetres in that area because her body was reacting so heavily to coffee. Not everybody reacts that way. I have no reaction to coffee whatsoever. I can drink coffee and it does nothing to my uh, measurements. What we are learning in the research is that coffee, if you are choosing non-organic coffee, does not have the nutrient benefits that organic coffee has. So organic coffee can actually have some nutritional benefit to the body and um, they are recommending that you spend that little bit more and go with the organic so that the nutrients in there, um, working from Dr. Andrew Lee's work here as food as medicine and he works as food as medicine to prevent cancer. Um, he talks about coffee actually being a good source for you um, if you get the organic coffee. But once again, having worked with women for 30 years, it is a bit of an individual thing. So I would recommend you do a bit of a test and measure. Um, we do know that our um, herbal teas are fantastic. I love a little bit of dandelion herbal tea, really good for our liver health. And there's so many beautiful herbal teas out there. But I do drink coffee, girls. I do it black. I put stevia in it. Um, it is a test and measure. So it's something I'm going to leave up to you. Yeah. All right, the next thing I want to um, say, this. so this is your learning lesson. Black coffee will not spike your blood sugars, so that's happy days. Use stevia as your sweetener, but it may rise your cortisol levels. So cortisol is a stress hormone, and if you are one of those unlucky ones where it rises your cortisol levels, that's where you'll have the up and down mood swings and you will find it more difficult to lose weight and you will hold fluid. Um, so I do recommend that you test and measure. I say that Pepsi Max, Diet Coke, Diet Soft Drinks may interfere, uh, we don't know for sure, with your good gut bacteria in your gut. So that means also that you may experience cravings. The jury is out on that. But we do know that your liver does not love diet drinks because of the additives that are in there. So I'll leave it up to you. So girls, the next question is low-fat yogurt. And we're getting up to 45 minutes, so I'll try not to keep you too much longer. But 
What we know about yogurt girls is, um, let me do the next picture for you, is that look at this once again. If you look at the top one, that was a plain zero fat yogurt, zero fat yogurt. And it had um, one tablespoon of honey in there, massive spikes. But if you went down low and you did a Greek yogurt, so it's just a pure Greek yogurt, nothing sweet in there, um, but you threw in your fresh blueberries, which is a great antioxidant, goes in and fights free radicals, helps us to, um, free radicals can, you know, put us at risk of cancer. So it's fantastic to go in and fight free radicals. So blueberries is one of those foods, food is medicine. And look, it hardly does anything to your blood sugars. Yogurt is fantastic in that it is a great source of protein. Um, the one that I normally recommend to the girls, we do a Yopro, um, Chia Barney is another one, but you must, must, must read the nutritional panel. So if you look at the nutritional panel, like some of those Chia Barneys, you're going to be finding the carbohydrates quite high, the sugar levels quite high, and it will not support you. So you want to get one where the sugar's low, where the carbohydrate is low, and the protein is high. So the one I get is the Yopro 15 gram protein. It comes in things like vanilla. It does come in blueberry. It comes in the caramel one's really nice. <laughs> Behave, Dana. Oh, but I do love it. I have that for dessert every night instead of ice cream because it doesn't spike my blood sugars and um, it gives me that sweetness because I'm a sugar head. So um, it's, it's healthy all around. So all on our private Facebook page, we'll put um, some photos of my yogurt so that you can get a bit of an idea on that. So the idea was yogurt, yes, tick, 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 um, but do understand yo all yogurt is not good for you. Some yogurt will be absolutely detrimental to you trying to lose weight um so girls the learning lesson low fat yogurt fruit yogurt will spike your blood sugar levels you must start reading nutritional panels um choose the low sugar greek yogurt we do not want more than five grams one teaspoon of sugar per serving yeah Add blueberries if you're going to choose a fruit rather than things like banana or apple. Um, yogurt is a fantastic source of protein. It's up there for me. Um, it will help you to increase your muscle tone through the exercise that you'll be doing in our program and that ultimately will help you speed up your metabolism. So it's a big tick. Girls, I just want to share just here, like I just think this is just fascinating. You'll see with our body plan I've given you some um easy breakfast choices and um and so that's a good thing but I just want to show you like as a woman did you think like special k is cool like it blows my mind like look at that with blood sugar levels with special k because you know they they sort of say it don't they special k it's the weight loss food but then magic spoon which I don't want you to have that's an expensive cereal which actually comes from America and you know you can get it but if you want to spend a lot of money on your breakfast cereal but you can see that that what the difference is just by choosing a different breakfast cereal so the one that I have recommended for you is supportive of your blood sugar levels and I do want you to know that when you start going off plan on your own tangent thinking that you're eating healthy food sometimes it won't be supportive even though you think it will be but once again q a girls we're doing it on a weekly basis ask me anything and you'll get your answers um, so girls the next one i just wanted to show you was um, this one and so this is a pear look at down the bottom eating fruit alone omg crazy crazy now throw with nut butter I do this with apples, so I will cut the apple in slices and I make like a nut butter sandwich. And once again, you must remember about portion control, but just look at that difference, girls. So this journey is very important for you to start to educate yourself as we go through. So the learning lesson I want you to take from our um, Ask Me Anything today is what you eat, when you eat, and how much you eat does matter. But stay with me in the program each step of the way. Keep connected, keep asking questions, and together as a team, we are going to smash this out of the park. 
So girls, the next thing, one more question is how to stay regular. And this one, girls, is so important. You're not alone in this because I find a lot of women say to me, um, one of our girls, I think, um, I won't say names, but when she changed her breakfast to my breakfast, it really bound her up and nothing worked for her. So we established that she needed to go back to what was working for her for breakfast, got her off on a good start, happy days. I am all about you being regular because it gets rid of toxins out of the body and you need to establish why, 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 why are you not regular? Is it that you've got a lazy bowel? Is it that um, there's something else going on for you? We need to establish this. Now, girls, I have a hubby that does need support in this area, so I personally don't. But just through being with him, um, I have come up with some tips, tricks and strategies that help work and we have actually been with uh, many doctor specialists, um, especially in the last couple of years. So what I do recommend I know does work for him. Um, so your gut bacteria is important. So when I talk about gut bacteria, when you're having preservatives and you're having additives and your blood sugars are all over the place, um, and you're eating white food and you're eating, drinking alcohol and, you know, you just whatever, you're not supporting your gut bacteria. So the more gut ba good, gut, good gut bacteria we have, we actually look at it these days as diversity. So once again, another conversation for another day. But I talk about rainbows. So having all these different colors and all these different types of food in your diet and it will support your bacteria because we get what we call diversity and diversity will lead to good health. Good health will lead to being regular. So we do need you to think about are you really been supporting your gut bacteria? Have you been doing the right things in regard to how you eat? And fiber is super duper important. So girls that go on like things like keto to lose weight, they know that it does make you lose weight because it's high in fat and it's low in protein and carbs. And so your blood sugars aren't spiking. And so your body loses fat and you think, happy days, I'm a keto girl. This is working for me. It's not working for you because ultimately from a health point of view, when you don't have fiber, you're not looking after your gut health. And when you're not looking after your gut health, things like cancer can come up high on the list. And so we need to stay healthy. We can't go on these crazy bad diets because, well, that worked for so-and-so and that worked for so-and-so. We must stay to health at our age. We must support our hormones. We must lower inflammation in our body. And we've got to just stay with the research for our age group. We are not small men and we are not young women. We are women over the age of 50 and we need to treat ourselves as such with kick gloves, tender, loving care, research, science, and don't be crazy doing off-cuff things because you are putting yourself at risk of long-term damage. We know good fibre is good for us. I always say if you had the baby bottles when your kids were young, you got that baby brush in there to clean it and it scrapes all the um, residue milk off, it's the same for fibre. It scrapes your colon so it helps get rid of stuff that's maybe stuck in there and so it acts like a, um, a – cleanses your colon this is good gets rid of toxins out of your body and it also forms um you know bulkier poos but because of the bulk that comes with fiber sometimes you need extra fluid because if you have not got enough fluid if you're dehydrated and 70 percent we know people are dehydrated, well, then maybe it becomes hard and it becomes harder to pass. So remembering that fluid is very important. Now, we'll say a tip here. Sometimes coffee can help move the show. Um, I was listening to a podcast the other day and they're still unsure as to why, but they do know that um, fluid can be really um, – that coffee can get you – I, I actually think it's something to do with your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system. For some reason, it seems to bring into your um, sympath uh, para your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight and flight because of the stress hormone that it releases. And your body's natural reaction to that is to get rid of anything that's in your stomach because your body thinks you're going into fight and flight. And so it's preparing you. Um, and so you get rid of what's in your gut. 
Um, so, that, but that's not great either because it puts sugar into the arms and the legs. But if you are needing a bit of a tip, sometimes that can be supportive and help you. Um, so do remember, fluid girls, you do need to make sure that you're having enough water. I will just um, say movement. Like my hubby, he will sit and go, I can't go to the toilet. But if I can get him moving 10 minutes on the treadmill or go for a walk, which gets a bit dodgy because he's got to go to the toilet. But um, just movement. You know, I'll talk about the rebounder again, put on um, a fat-burning aerobic video in our Live Longer Online Health Club. Just 10 minutes of movement, girls, tends to rock and roll that and get you going. So it tends to release and help you to go to the toilet. Stomach acid levels. Now, for me personally, I know that I believe my stomach acid levels aren't what they should be. So your stomach acid should actually be quite acidy. So that's what helps you to break down food and it helps to digest properly and stops bloatedness and gas and all that uncomfortable feeling. And um, our blood is alkaline, but our stomach acids are not. They're acidy because they've got to break down the food. Sometimes if you don't have enough stomach acids in there and you're not breaking down the food properly, it can um, lead to things like uncomfortable um, bloatedness and gas and, and that feeling like you want to go to the toilet but you can't. And so what I recommend there is I've just started this again and I got and this is my test of measure, which was just a big aha for me, was to add the um, apple cider vinegar and I did, I'm doing two tablespoons a day. I'm doing one um, 15 to 20 minutes before lunch and one 15 to 20 minutes before dinner and it's a turnaround show. Like honest to goodness, like um, – I'm noticing after lunch, rather than getting that uncomfortable feeling, I'm going to the toilet. And so that's positive because now going twice a day. So I'm really opening up to you girls. <laughs> Laugh out loud. But I do want to share that. And um, it was a game changer for me. So any girls that are struggling, do consider um, it came from the glucose goddess. And she said there was a study done and it was like you shouldn't have more than like 60 tablespoons or something a day. It was just crazy amount. Like don't even worry about am I having too much. But do be mindful that you should drink it through a straw. And I always wash my mouth out with water after I've drank it. So I'm not putting my enamel on my teeth at risk um, of injuring that in any way. And it's been a game changer. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, and the other thing is support girls. So my husband uses Benny Fiber, and Benny Fiber is 100% natural. I don't know if you can see that in my picture here. But the good thing about Benny Fiber, you can just buy it at Coles or the chemist or whatever, is you can just add it to anything. You can add it to food, you can add it to coffee, you can add it to drinks. It's got no taste and it completely dissolves. So it's not gluggy. It's not anything like that. Um, the bowel specialist is what recommended this um, brand and it's been great for him. So I did want to recommend that to you as well and that could be another way to do it. So girls, I just want to come on from here to say let's finish this up. We are um, going to be learning more as we go through. So you may have more questions I will not answer those till next week into ask questions, ask me anything. But in the meantime, get on to getting yourself organised, get excited, get with the plan, get on our five, um, private Facebook group, connect with us, take the steps and let's rock and roll this for the next four weeks. I've just written here 12 um, foods to balance your blood sugar. I will share that with you, but just that I'd throw it in there today. And girls, I do want to finish this with just saying, we start Monday. If you are watching this, because I've decided to share this with Women's 40 Plus just to give them a bit of a dip their toe in the water as to what you girls are about to receive. And if anybody has watched this to the end, you are sort of showing me that you do care. So if you do want to join us, it is not too late. I'm putting this up today, Thursday, and um, happy days. Let's do this for four weeks and see how far we all get together. Thank you, girls, and I'm excited. Take care.